you to tell all your friends about me. What are you? I'm Batman. Batman! Howdy, and welcome back to the 80s Toy Museum. I hear there's a new Batman movie coming out called The Batman, and love it or hate it, it is definitely going to revitalize the interest of Batman in a lot of people. So since I haven't really done very many theme months on the channel here, I figured for the next couple of videos, I'm going to be taking a look at some of the gosh darn Batman items that I have in my collection. I'll save this one for another review, but I just wanted to show it off for a second. It's the Stealth Launch Batmobile Tumbler. Really excited to show that one off. But for today, I'm going to be showing off my two, what are these guys, five inch? It's about five inch. It's a, it's a weird scale. And one of the reasons I never collected many of these superhero comic book, either Marvel or DC f figures back in the day is because they were just kind of a weird scale. They were a little bit bigger than GI Joe's. They were a little bit smaller and definitely less beefy than Masters of the Universe. A little bit bigger than uh, vintage Star Wars figures. Hey, all right, all right, here's a little known fact. John Ratzenberger was never considered for the role of Batman. And I'm gonna do these in chronological order of release, starting with the Tim Burton Batman figure from 1989. Really the one I think that started the whole Batman craze for a lot of people. The Adam West show had been on TV, had been on in reruns, and I enjoyed watching it. But it was it was campy, it was funny, it was like a live action tick show. And I never really thought of Batman as a cool brooding character. Even on the cartoons, he was really not all that dark and brooding. And then Burton's movie came out. And we saw the Michael Keaton Batman, and I remember really, really wanting this figure, but never got it. He did come with, uh, like, a grappling gun, which was not included. I picked this guy up just recently at that antique mall that I just showed off. The one-of-a-kind antique mall in London, Ontario. Paid 10 bucks Canadian for it, and it is pretty much in perfect condition almost perfect condition a few little scuff marks and stuff but if you take a look at the uh, paint job on the bat symbol it's perfect the eyes are great just a little bit of paint wear on the horns which I'll probably touch up and uh, articulation on this guy it's just up and down on the arms no elbow bend and the legs go straight out and he actually has a knee bend too so, a little more advanced than a uh, vintage Kenner figure. And speaking of vintage Kenner figures, there's actually one more figure I wanted to pull out and do a size comparison because I think they're going to be exactly the same size. Well, how about that? Quicksilver from Silverhawks, also a Kenner figure, is actually just ever so slightly taller. So, I don't know if that's because he's... Um, a kind of a cyborg and they wanted to make him a little bit bigger or if it's it's just the whole scale of the line is a little bit taller I thought they'd be exactly the same since there was a shadow wing Batman which had an action feature exactly like that they also recolored the Sprint Hawk from Silver Hawks into a uh, jet for Batman so that's interesting I thought they would be exactly the same size Comes with a soft goods cape, and it is this really nice, slightly see-through cape. And he does kind of have an action feature. His belt is sort of like a grappling hook. It's kind of hard to get a grip of it, but I'm sure people who own this figure back in the day, this sound is going to take them right back. That little grappling hook sound you can pull it right out and then you let it go and it snaps right back in so you, you don't even need a, a grappling hook gun or a battering grappling thing you can just use this hook it on something and then 
he can actually swoop up and out of harm's way. So as hyped as I was for Batman in 1989, and as much as I wanted this figure back then, never pulled the trigger on it, but this is definitely a, a case of better late than never. Very happy to finally have the first Michael Keaton black suit Batman figure. This is one I did have. This is from my childhood, and I didn't keep all that many original toys I had back then, but I knew this one was special, so when I was giving all my toys away to friends with kids, I, uh, I decided I was going to hang on to this one just because I wanted that first Batman so bad, and uh, I just felt so lucky that a few years later, I believe he was released in maybe very late 1990, 1991. He came on two different cards, and the leg does say 1990 on him right there. But you, you can never be too sure. Sometimes it's off by a whole year since the uh, year is when the figure actually went into production. But this is Quick Change, Bruce Wayne. And for 1990, I thought this was really, really ahead of its time. So it's a Bruce Wayne figure that comes with all of the costume bits to add on to turn him into Batman. I'm going to pop off all of these parts, and I don't think these have come off of him since probably the 90s. I think I just suited him up as Batman back then, and I've left him like that all these years. So I didn't do much with him. By that point, I really wasn't playing with toys. It, even back then, it was more of like a just a cool thing to sit on my desk or on a uh, shelf. So that's why the paint is fantastic on him. And the thing you got to be most careful with is the belt. If you just pull on it, you might damage this. Sectars and Rambo are the worst for damaging these type of uh, old school pegs. So, and we got all the extra armor bits off. Here is Bruce Wayne. And this is before scanning technology where they would just have an actor sit in a, a booth surrounded by cameras. Someone sculpted this by hand based on Michael Keaton's likeness. And I think they just did an amazing job. It really captures him perfectly. Now you want to get nuts? Come on, let's get nuts. Okay, okay, relax. Here, have some nuts. Jeez. So it's mostly just a black outfit with kind of a cool, not screen accurate, but I like what they did with it. Like a tech, uh, energy, electrical looking, subtle bat symbol. And the paint on him is fantastic. It's really weird kind of going through one of my own personal vintage toys and looking it over and going, wow. Great paint job. He's almost mint. It's amazing. Even on the hands. So he does have a gripping hand. He did come with something like a walkie-talkie radio type of thing. That's long gone. Don't know where that went. But luckily one of the gauntlets that you can slip on him has a permanent molded in there. Batarang. So won't be able to lose that one. We'll be right back. Now, back to our program. And uh, before I suit him up as Batman, I want to take a look. This is one thing I really like doing with these figures and toys. Uh, how he'll look with certain other toys, other toy lines, crossover alert. So here's the perfect Michael Knight figure for the Diamond Select kit. And since he's all dressed in black and kit is black, I'm wondering if he'll fit in the Diamond Select. Ah, oh, look at that, he won't. Almost, but he's actually just a little too tall for it. So, too big for 1 15th scale Knight Rider. He'll 
probably fit in the talking night rider but probably look too small in it before i put him in the original talking night rider i can see he's he's gonna be way too small for it you can see how much tinier he is than uh the hoff yeah he's he easily fits and it looks not good and that was pretty much my issue with this weird size being just about an inch taller than gi joe figures wouldn't fit in a lot of 118th or 115th or 16th scale vehicles and also being way too small for a six inch scale or or Mego scale vehicles too and another weird thing is that this previous version has bendable knees this one doesn't so that's another thing I just didn't understand about the Kenner Batman line just changing articulation points on the fly. always liked how G.I. Joe was always consistent. So let's suit him back up to be Batman. And I don't know if these boots are the exact same, I think. Yeah, there is a left and a, and a right side. It's very subtle, but that looks like it's the right boot. And this one is the left one. Put his booties on. It, they look oversized. It, you know, it's, it is what it is. Technology has come a long way for this type of stuff. Uh, the fist, you just slip it on. I know some people are cringing, going, "Ah, oh, you're wearing the paint off by doing it that way." But you know, this is how I did it way back when and uh, just for old time's sake that's how I'm going to do it today got that one in there they're a little loose when they're on there but they're not going to come off and the armor plate fasten it in the back and the coolest part is popping the cowl on. I am the knight. And he's definitely not wearing hockey pads. So he's got the same type of slightly see-through cape. Really nice cut to it. Classic Batman looking cape. And it's long enough so that you can actually just slightly shroud him in his own cape. Out in front it can be a little tricky to get him to stand. He, he tends to want to lean forward, especially if you have his arms forward like that, thanks to the lack of knee articulation. And you get a Michael Keaton, Tim Burton, Batman looking figure. And here they are side by side. So definitely, I think this one looks better as Batman, but this one, for what it's able to do, I love it. I love knowing that there is a really great looking Michael Keaton figure underneath all of that stuff. It's funny that you can see his turtleneck. Bruce Wayne's turtleneck is visible. They could have just not given him a turtleneck, just like a smooth collar. And I got one more ride I want to try him in. I actually do have a big Batmobile and he's probably going to be undersized in it as well, but I'm not sure since this Batmobile is actually a little bit undersized. It's a little smaller than it should be. The uh, Mattel 6 inch scale Batmobile is a little more uh, to scale with 6 inch figures. It's tricky to get him in there because of this Batarang that's just taking up a bunch of space. Well, son of a gun, that's actually perfect. So there you go. This five inch tall figure and I guess by that token that one as well they're actually the perfect size for this Batman 66 slightly undersized McFarlane Batmobile and since that Batman is kind of tricky to get in there because of his Batarang hand let me try this one because he's the same size he's he's perfect so if you thought the McFarlane Batmobile 66 was just a little too small for your McFarlane figures or Mattel 
uh, six inch figures. It's actually the perfect scale for five inch figures. And I'm actually really surprised at how good that looks. It's always fun to just try a little bit of mixing and matching. Like when I put uh, a Batman figure, the McFarlane 66 Batman in the talking Knight Rider. It looks so cool. And the Keaton Batman and Adam West's Batmobile. It's actually a really cool combination. And I did actually find a figure that is the exact same size as these guys. It's the Kenner Ghostbusters figures. So he's on a little bit of a stand there, making him a bit taller, but pretty much the exact same height with Kenner's real Ghostbusters, even though these guys look a lot more cartoony. And here's another cool little bit of cross compatibility. Even though the new McFarlane six inch Batman figures are quite a bit bigger than these guys, you can take these punch sound effects and it's handy since this Batman figure actually has a punching fist and you can attach it and it actually sticks on there perfect. You can attach it on to the other side and you can have your Tim Burton Batman figure with the campy 66 shows sound effects. Although the gauntlets that fit over the Bruce Wayne figure are a lot thicker. So there's quite a bit of stretching that'll have to be done. Uh, it still works though. Still works perfectly. I'm Batman. So if you want to get nuts, try your local grocery store. If you want to get these figures, Sorry, I don't know what to tell you other than eBay or a uh, local antique shop like I found this guy at or a local toy convention. Uh, there are no reissues for these guys in the works. So this is a strictly vintage item. But hopefully you enjoyed this showcase and we're able to uh, vicariously enjoy these for a couple of minutes. Even though you don't have them there right in front of you. So want to thank you for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed it. I want to give a big thank you to the Patreon tribe. Thank you for all of your support. Supporting the channel over on patreon.com slash Michael Mercy. And also the channel panel. All of the people who hit the join button. Thank you for supporting the channel as well. Hope you have a bright day. And until next time, Nerd Mistake.